Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today's video is hopefully going to be a weekly vlog and I say hopefully because it's been many weeks since I have successfully filmed a weekly vlog. But I'm feeling quite determined this week not only to do some filming but just to get some content out in general. So hopefully I will be motivated enough and productive enough to get a video's worth of work done this week and also actually get a video's worth of footage of this week's work. I have a couple things in progress but those probably aren't going to feature heavily in this video. I also have a few more casual things I want to start on but I think those are going to have their own devoted videos. So the main topic for today's video is going to be a ladies wrapper and I'm going to be making this out of some Halloween inspired quilting cottons. It's going to be based on this sketch which is based on some newspaper, or not newspaper, some magazine images that were scanned and posted on Flickr. These are from the early 1900s and I came across them when I was browsing Pinterest for inspiration. And oh boy did inspiration strike. These scans are from the turn of the century, so the late 1890s or very early 1900s. And they've got the silhouette that you would associate with that era, but they're made out of more casual fabrics because they were really just intended to be worn around the house. The other very distinctive thing about these garments is that they're not fitted. They're usually fitted to the top of the bust and they would have very large puffed elaborate sleeves and sometimes a relatively intricate yoke, but they fell pretty free from that point. They're typically worn over top of corsets and petticoats and everything like that, but they weren't tailored to fit over those. They were a much looser garment that was cinched in at the waist generally with some sort of belt that also wasn't part of the actual garment. These are also sometimes called house gowns, which seems very fitting since I have barely left the house over the past six months. Anyway, I fell in love with these dresses and I really wanted to make one of my own. And when I was going through my fabric, I had a lot of cottons that were kind of appropriate. I didn't have a lot of coordinating cottons and I really want there to be some sort of matching but also contrast with the fabrics used. I also didn't want to use a silk or a wool because those just seemed a little bit boring and a little bit more dressy than I want this garment to be. So I was browsing various fabric shops and I came across a new quilt fabric collection and fell in love. This is a Halloween collection and the main fabric that really stuck out to me was this one. So it is a rectangular looking print at a glance or a diamond print, but the little squares are actually made up of four different bats that are pointing towards the center and surrounding the bats are broomsticks. And one of the coordinating fabrics for this collection is this black base fabric that has little lightning bolts on it in light and dark gray. So I really liked how those two look together and I thought from a distance it could sort of pass as a historical geometric print, but up close it's very clearly bats and lightning bolts and that just makes me happy. Then for trim, because I did want there to be a little bit of trim, I purchased this black lace from Lace Place, which I will also link down below. So this is going to go around the bottom edge of the yoke, as well as around the ruffles on the sleeves. Because oh boy, are there ever going to be ruffles on the sleeves. I'm really excited about this project. I haven't finished a historical costume in a good long while, and I feel like this is a good balance of frilly and interesting and fiddly, uh, which are all things I love in costumes, but it's also relatively simple and doesn't require too much effort to fit, which also lend themselves well to someone who's a bit out of practice of historical sewing. So it should be fun. I've already cut out the skirt and the bodice. I'm also going to be using that bodice pattern to cut out a lining layer, which is what the skirt is actually going to be sewn onto, and then it will be sewn inside the assembled kind of yoke portion. And hopefully by the end of this video we will end up with a wonderful turn-of-the-century ladies wrapper from Halloween printed cottons. That is the sketch in a little bit more detail. I'd like to make a beret-esque hat to go with this and I actually have fake bat wings coming out of it as opposed to the bird wings that would have traditionally been used. So we'll see if I have time in this video to make that as well. Uh, but for today, I'm gonna to be focusing on this upper yoke portion and potentially also getting the skirt, which really starts above the bust, as I said, seen together since I got that cut out last night. I haven't drafted the sleep pattern yet because the only part I could really make a mock-up for without wasting tons of fabric was the yoke. And I did that and it fit relatively well. I actually have the mock-up for it on my dress form because I was using that as a guide for draping the skirt. But the reason I haven't drafted the sleeves yet is because this part of the garment will eventually have a lot of weight on it. So it'll be pulled down and that will end up changing the fit of the arm side and how the sleeves lay. So I want to wait until I have that weight of the skirt pulling down the yoke and the upper part of the bodice before drafting the sleeves uh, to get a better idea of how they'll ultimately end up fitting. 
So I'm sure there will be footage of me whining about that later in this video. But as I said, for now, I'm just working on the yoke. I have the pattern there. And then this is what I have cut out from that pattern. Uh, so I used the lightning bolt fabric for this part of the project, and then it is uh, backed with that canvas. So now I just have to base these layers together, which I think I'll be doing by hand for once. And then I'll be sewing up the side seams and turning the bottom edge inward by half inch. And then I'll be trimming that bottom edge with some of that lace. Uh, so I'd like to get all of that done tonight, but we'll just have to see how it goes because I'm a little bit slower than I used to be since I am so out of practice. All right, it got hot up here, so I turned on my fan, but the layers are basted together. I just used a wax thread and a relatively large needle to make the process a little bit faster. As you can tell, I used pretty large stitches too. So now I'm just gonna sew these pieces together at the side seams with a one inch seam allowance, and then I'm going to sew across the bottom. I actually marked a line half an inch away from the edge. So I'm gonna sew across this line and then use the stitch point uh, on the right side of the fabric as a guide for where to turn it inward. That stitching is also going to reinforce the points, which I'll have to clip up to, uh, to turn the edge inward evenly. The side seams are sewn up. I used a line of stitching to mark the turn inward point, and then I actually turned the bottom edge inward and whip stitched it to the canvas interlining. So now this bottom edge is nicely finished, and I'm just going to sew some lace around it from the interior, so there's a nice lace ruffle going around the entire bottom edge. So I just finished seaming together all of these skirt pieces. The front and back pieces are kind of rectangles, basically, that slope outward slightly at the bottom edge, or rather towards the hem. And then these side panels have a great deal more shaping to them, though you can't really tell. Let me actually flip it so it's wrong side out, and then you'll be able to see the seams at least. Or sort of at least. I did a pretty good job ironing, so hopefully they're not too visible. But this is the front panel, this is the back panel, and then these are the two side panels. So there's a seam here, a seam here, and a seam here. So these are a little bit more fitted towards the upper portion. They actually uh, fit fairly close to the body for the first maybe four inches or so. And then they flare outward. Uh, so they'll sit over the skirt very similarly to a more traditional 1890s skirt would. They are quite rounded through the hips. They just have more volume than they usually would because it's more of a shapeless style. Though it still has a very specific silhouette. It's difficult to explain and I think it's going to be kind of difficult to accomplish and I haven't made a full mock-up for this so I'm not even entirely sure it's going to work out but I'm hoping for the best because I'm such a naturally optimistic person <laughs> and definitely not sarcastic at all. Anyway, the next step is just going to be gathering the top edge of these down, and I think I'm going to do it by machine and then pull on the threads to gather them, and I'll show you what I mean in a sec. I'm also going to leave the front one and a half inches ungathered uh, because that portion will be like partially folded inward to create a button placket. But I can't do that until after it's sewn on to the yoke portion. I'm just going to leave it alone for now, and I'm going to repeat this process for the back panel as well since that's gathered to fit the yoke too. And then those side panels are left ungathered because they are drafted to fit the bottom edge of the yoke. All right, so I've gathered down the other edges, but I wanted to show you what it looks like before I got to the gathering. So to do this, I set my sewing machine for a larger than I would usually use stitch length. I think I went for about a three and a half. And I backstitched at one end and then I left the thread tails long at the other. And I sewed two lines of stitching. So one is half an inch away from the edge of the fabric. And then the other is a sewing machine foot's width away from that. That, uh, which is about a quarter inch. So I sewed those two lines of stitching and now I'm just going to pull on one of the threads. So there are two threads, one for the bobbin and one for the top thread, and I'm only going to pull on one of them. It doesn't really matter which one. And that's going to put tension on the fabric uh, and cause it to gather. And you want to do this really gently, really slowly, so you don't break the thread uh, because you can end up putting a lot of tension on the thread. So you have to do it really gently and kind of manipulate and move the gathers in the fabric along and down uh, as you do this. But you can end up with gathers that look like this, which are more even and more pretty than they would be if you did them by hand uh, and much faster too. So this is the gathered portion for the back. This is the gathered portion for the front. And I just have to repeat this for the other front and then I can get it sewn on to the bodice lining. I don't know if I actually even showed you the bodice lining, but it's cut from the exact same bodice pattern, just from a very lightweight cotton. And then I turned the bottom edge inward by a half inch, and I just top stitched it down a quarter inch away from the folded edge. So I'm going to line these edges up with the top of my skirt piece and sew them on. So the wrong sides are all on the same side, and then when this is sewn to the interior of the 
proper outer bodice, uh, all the raw edges will be hidden between the two layers. At least that is my plan. Um, so this is also going to take the majority of the weight of the skirt on, so then there won't be any dragging or any puckering on the outer layer. So I'm hoping that this is going to work. Uh, and once I get it mounted on here, I can actually do a fitting because this piece should fit the same way as the outer bodice. And I can also start drafting the sleeves if I feel up to it, which I probably won't because it's a little bit later in the day, but we'll see. It is now the next day. I did not get around to sleeve drafting last night, but I did draft the collar pattern which I forgot to do earlier. And I spent quite a bit of this morning trying to figure out which color I should make the collar, whether I should use the gray fabric, whether I should try and find a gray fabric in my stash, whether I should use black, or whether I should use white. And I finally decided that I'd make it out of black cotton sateen because that is what I easily had on hand. I'm definitely going to trim it with one of those leaf ruffles, but I'm also trying to decide whether or not to trim it with piping made out of this to make it more cohesive with the rest of the garment, or whether I want to do some lace trim, uh, or even some beading around the edge of the collar as well. So now I'm going to play around with a few different options of that. I just finished cutting out both the top and the bottom of the collar and then cutting out some horsehair canvas, which is serving as inner lining uh, and adding some stiffening and some volume to the collar. So I just cut the horsehair to be a half inch smaller all the way around than the outer fabric and a quarter inch smaller at the top edge. And I made sure to notch it at the center back as well as where the shoulder seams will go. So now this is ready to be sewn to the other piece as soon as I figure out whether I'm adding piping or lace trim or anything like that because those would have to be inserted into the seam when I'm seaming the two layers together. All right, so I decided I was gonna trim the collar with some of the lace ruffles and also a little bit of the piping out of the gray bat fabric. So I just basted the piping on and then I machine sewed on the lace trim, uh, just the very edge of it, so it'll be hidden in the seam allowance. And because the lace trim is roughly, it kind of has a mind of its own. I didn't want it to accidentally get caught in the seam allowance, so I just basted it uh, to the interior of the collar. So now I'm going to pin the other layer on with the right sides facing each other. And oh my god, do I have enough scissors over here or what? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to pin the layers together and then from this side, I will be sewing them together so I can get right up against the edge of the hair canvas because um, that way when I turn it right side out, the edges will look nice and sharp. So I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I last filmed. Uh, I ended up finishing the collar, so I got the layers sewn together and then basted together and pressed. And I was really happy with how the piping and the lace combination looked. It worked exactly as I wanted. But then I wanted to add some contrast, so I was playing around with the idea of adding some beading. So they have these really pretty uh, square gray beads and then these off-white pearls, and I thought those together would really bring out some of the lighter tones in the fabric and just tie it all together and add some contrast. And I really like how it looks, but I think if I commit to beading, then I also have to bead this edge, and then I think it's going to be too much beading for how casual this garment is supposed to be. So I think I'm gonna remove the beading I've done so far, and if I decide I really want it to be there later, I can always add it after the collar has been attached, even though that will be a little bit more challenging. Now that I look at this, however, I think I want to add piping it to this edge, which means I have to remove the lace trim I've already sewn on. Uh, but it was just sewn on by hand, so that should be relatively easy to do. And then I can actually get the collar sewn on, and then I have to start trying to figure out the sleeves, which I should do while this day is still relatively young, because I'm definitely not going to want to do it later tonight when I'm tired. More tired. I'm always pretty tired. But I had a very nice afternoon kind of brainstorming about how to move forward with this uh, and got quite a few patterns listed as well, which is always good. So it is now the next morning and I actually had a pretty productive night last night, uh, or evening I guess. I ended up getting the sleeves drafted and cut out and mostly assembled. So I'll talk you through that process in a bit, but so far this morning I'm working on the sleeve ruffles, which I also got drafted last night and they were much simpler to draft, uh, though it still took a few tries to get the shape I wanted. So these are basically ruffles that sit over top of the puffed sleeve. The puffed sleeve gives them volume and it just adds some drama and flair to the garment as well as helping to exaggerate that uh, turn of the century silhouette and the large sleeves it was famous for. So I'm going to be making both of these out of the black fabric, so they will tie in with the bodice, and then the sleeves are gonna be made out of the bat fabric that the skirt's made out of. However, the underside of this fabric, since it is a quilting cotton, it's just printed on one side of the material, and the underside doesn't look particularly appealing. And since these sleeves um, and these ruffles are hopefully going to be so boisterous, I don't know, since they're gonna flare out so much, I think you will end up seeing the underside of them. I also wanted to trim the edge with piping and lace, and that doesn't look particularly appealing on the underside either. So I've decided I'm gonna line the sleeves and I'm actually gonna line the sleeves with cotton and then I'm going to back the cotton lining with netting, which will provide them with even more volume. However, these are going to be pretty densely gathered down and the sleeves are already pretty densely gathered down and that's a lot of bulk in the sleeve head. That end up being five layers of cotton plus netting densely gathered down and that's just a lot. So what I've done is I've cut the lining to be a half inch smaller than the outer 
layer uh, or cut the top edge of the lining to be a half inch smaller. So that edge is going to be turned inward by another half inch and then whip stitched an inch away from the top edge of the sleeve ruffles. So that way when the top edge is gathered down there will only be one layer gathered and one layer inserted into the sleeve head and into the arm side. That should help reduce bulk while still giving me the look of a pretty lining and giving me the option to add netting to the interior to provide volume as well. So I'm really hoping that this works and kind of excited to see how this works out. Uh, there are obviously two sleeve ruffles, so I've got the two different patterns for them. One is an inch shorter than the other, and then here is the lining for them. Uh, I'm running a little short on fabric. I seriously don't have very much left at all, so I have to piece these together. I just have to sew a seam um, before I can turn the top edge inward and get the netting basted in and everything like that. And while I was at cutting things out and going through my fabric this morning, I also turned a whole bunch of my scraps into one and a quarter inch wide bias cut strips, or relatively bias cut. And bias cut just means on the diagonal grain of the fabric. And it's supposed to be on the perfect diagonal grain, but I'm kind of known for just cutting strips at some sort of an angle and calling it good enough, and that's what I did in this case. So I managed to turn even some relatively small strips, um, or some small scraps rather, into strips that could be seamed together to form piping, which should be enough to go around all four of the sleeve ruffles as well as around the cuffs for the sleeve. So I'm going to get the backs of these seamed together, get netting basted into them, and then get the top edge turned inward, and I'll try and update you somewhere along the way. So here are my sleeve ruffle lining pieces, all nice and finished, or finished for now. Uh, I showed you what these looked like cut out. I just seamed together the pieces that had to be seamed together because I didn't have enough to cut them out on the fold. Then I cut out netting that was the same size and I basted it uh, with all of the edges aligned. I sewed a half inch away from the top edge of all of the pieces and then I clipped into the seam allowance up until I reached that point and then I used my iron to turn the edge inward at the stitch line. So those little clippings were just to create ease so it would turn inward smoothly. And then I basted the edge turned inward down as well. So that's what it looks like from the exterior, and this is what it looks like from the interior, and this edge will be facing the interior of the outer fabric, so all of the raw, ugly edges will be hidden away. But before I can do that, the next step is actually sewing on piping and ruffles to the outer pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I can align the edges of those pieces with the edges of these pieces and get them all sewn together and hopefully have some finished pretty little sleeve ruffles before the day is done. And hopefully that all makes sense, but if it doesn't, I will break it down a little bit more as I go through the various steps. So the ruffle and piping are now basted in place. This is what it looks like from the right side now, but once the lining is added and it's turned right side out, it will sit like this, and you'll just see a smooth line of piping around the edge uh, as well as that lace trim. Now the lace trim kind of sticks out all over the place. I don't want this to accidentally get folded and caught in the seam when I'm sewing it uh, because then it won't lay right. So much like I did with collar, I just went ahead with all of the other pieces at least and basted the lace trim down so it won't be able to interfere with anything. And once that's done, the layers can be pinned together. So I just pinned the lining uh, in the outer layer with the right sides facing each other all along the bottom edge and I made sure that the bottom edge lined up and I'm just totally ignoring the top edge because as we've already established, uh, those edges are staggered so this won't extend into the seam when sewing it onto the arm side. So that is what it looks like while it is pinned, and I've actually pinned it from the other side because from this side I can see the line where I stitched the piping on. So I can make sure when I'm sewing these layers together that I'm going past that line. So the basting stitches securing the lace trim and the uh, piping onto the outer layer will be hidden by the uh, next layer of stitching. So I'm going to baste the one remaining piece, I just left it out as an example, and then I'm going to get all of these pinned to their corresponding lining pieces and get all of them sewn. And as I said, hopefully we'll have some beautiful looking sleeve ruffles before the day is done. So this is the stage of the bodice so far today, or rather the yoke and the set of sleeves. So last night I got quite a bit of work done on the sleeve ruffles, and you can see that I've just pinned one of them on there for now. But first I want to show you the sleeves, because I haven't actually talked that much about them. So this is what one of them looks like. Uh, it's a relatively heavily puffed sleeve, and then I just gathered the top edge using that method I showed earlier. I can't remember what I showed that method for. I think it was for gathering the top edge of the skirt, but where you do two rows of loose stitching and then you pull in the threads to gather them. And these are two piece sleeves that are assembled with French seams. I'm really happy with how they fit. The pattern looks super wonky, uh, but they're a nice sort of slim fit through the lower arm, but there's still enough room that I can easily get them on and off without having to have any closures at the wrist. Speaking of the wrist, I don't know where I put it, but I put the sleeves on last night uh, and I pinned the center point, which I marked with a 
notch at the center point of my shoulder and then I let the sleeve fall naturally and marked the center point on the outer part of my wrist. I don't know if that makes sense, I look really sloppy right now, but basically I put the sleeve on and I pinned it to my shirt and I let my arm sit like this and then I just marked kind of the point above my middle finger. That's rude. Uh, so the center portion of the outer Part of my arm if that makes any sense. Anyway I marked that point then I folded the sleeve in half at that point and I traced around the side and bottom edges and this became the base that I structured the cuff pattern off of and this is what the cuff pattern ended up looking like. Uh, so this line is cut on a fold, this line matches up with one of these seams at the underside of the sleeve and this is what the actual cuff looks like. So I assembled this using the same method I used for the collar more or less. Uh, it's made out of cotton sateen and then I basted the piping on and then I I sewed the lining in. Uh, I actually sewed the lining in backwards, um, so the wrong side is facing outward instead of the right side, but that's perfectly fine because uh, this will be hidden by the body of the sleeve anyway. Also, instead of inserting the lace trim into the seam, I stitched it on afterwards just because some of these corners were so fiddly and difficult to sew since I sewed up the side seam of the cuff before I sewed um, the piping or anything on. That was just easier to whip stitch the lace trim on afterwards. So I tried to kind of mimic the lines of the yoke in with the lines of the cuff. This is really difficult to get on while I'm still filming. Uh, so that is approximately what it looks like and the lace is just tucked inward but it will fluff out when I actually wear it. So I'd like to get those attached today and I would also like to finish my sleeve and folds. But first I just wanted to show you how the sleeve pattern developed. I didn't take any progress photos of the fitting process but this is what I based the sleeve on. This is from uh, 59 Authentic Turn of the Century Patterns. So these are patterns that would have originally been included in magazines that have been reproduced into a book. So I didn't trace this or anything, I just kind of plotted out some of their measurements and then drafted my take on it. So this is what the first draft looked like and this without any seam allowances. And this is what the final draft looked like. So I narrowed it quite significantly since this also includes a one inch seam allowance and it's almost the same dimensions as the first draft. Uh, I also made it kind of more tapered towards the top edge and the top edge itself is a little bit narrower and less bulbous. The underarm piece got lengthened quite significantly because it's a relatively high cut arm size and then I took this piece in to create most of the shaping. It ended up getting really weird up here and I probably could have reduced the volume of this piece and let this piece out so it doesn't have such a weird kind of hourglass shape but it's underneath the arm, no one sees it and it laid properly in my mock-up so I decided to just go with it and I am really happy with how the sleeves look. I just will admit that this pattern looks a bit wonky. So that is the sleeve pattern I ended up with. As I said I'm quite happy with it and now it is on to the sleeve ruffles. So these have come along quite a bit. I think last time I showed you I just had the uh, piping and the lace trim basted down and I was preparing to sew the lining in place. So I ended up doing that and then I pressed the entire outer edge and then I turned it right side out uh, so the lining was turned inward. Then I just whip stitched the top edge of the lining to the outer fabric using coordinating threads so you wouldn't see the stitches. And the lining sits an inch away or so from the top edge which I'd originally planned uh, since this will be gathered. I didn't want any of those gathering stitches to interfere with the lining since then it's going through twice as many layers of fabric. After that was done I stacked the pieces so I just aligned the top edge and pinned them together so now there are two tiers and I was going to gather these down using the same method I used for the sleeve head and for the skirt and everything like that since it's so much faster but since this is so many layers of fabric and it's so thick the thread was just breaking even when I was being really delicate. So I'm going to rip out that stitching, uh, that machine basting stitch and do it by hand instead. I've actually already done one side just to see how it look, but I haven't tied the thread off yet because I haven't figured out how densely I want to gather these down to. So I'm going to figure that out first, then I'm going to remove those stitches, gather the other one down, uh, and then they can be sewn onto the top of the sleeves, and then they can be sewn to the arm side. And then at some point I should sew on the cuffs. So should be making lots of progress today, which is always exciting. So I just finished sewing on the cuffs and I sewed them on incorrectly the first time. I sewed them with the wrong sides facing each other, I guess, and you have to do it with the right side facing the wrong side, but I fixed it, uh, so they were just seamed on, and then I folded it outward, pressed the seam, then folded it inward, and pressed it again. It uh, turns inward by about an eighth or a quarter of an inch, so you don't see the lining, uh, as opposed to the edges being perfectly level, and then I just sewed some relatively loose uh, kind of basting whip stitch uh, style stitches to hold it in place and to prevent it from coming down, though it definitely does want to stay this way, which is good. Uh, and I don't think I have to tack the lace or anything, I think it's going to stay as it is, but we'll see as it progresses and I do various fittings. I also finished my sleeve ruffles, so I got the top edges of these gathered down, and I actually ended up regathering the one from last night too because I decided that I wanted to leave the front sections ungathered, uh, and I gathered them on the other one. 
So both of these got regathered and now I can align the center points and get these basted to the tops of the normal sleeves. And then I can get these on the bodice, which I'm really not looking forward to because sewing on sleeves is the worst part of sleeves and sleeves are the worst part of a project in general. But hopefully it will go well enough and then I can move on to fun stuff like getting the skirt on and getting it hemmed and getting this thing finished. So I just got the sleeves on and I'm really happy with how it looks. However, I realized after sewing the sleeves on and trimming the allowance that they're slightly crooked, the ruffle on this sleeve goes down slightly farther than the ruffle on this sleeve, but hopefully it won't be too obvious when the garment's finished. My camera rudely cut me off, but I was just saying that the sleeves are slightly uneven, which is unfortunate, but can't be really fixed at this point because after sewing them on, I looked them over, I tried them on, I confirmed that it fit, and then I sewed an additional uh, line of stitching and I trimmed down the allowance. So now if I rip the sleeves off, I'd have to try to sew them back on with a quarter inch seam allowance, which I just really don't see turning out well. Uh, and I don't see it turning out better than they currently look now, even though they don't look perfect right now. The sleeves do still need a little more work. They're way more rambunctious than I was planning on them being. So from the side, you actually just see like this blob as opposed to defined ruffles. So I think I'm gonna go through and tack them together at a couple points uh, to try and create more of a defined shape and hopefully manage to get it symmetrical on both sides, which will be tricky. But I'm actually feeling pretty eager about getting the skirt attached. So I think that's what I'm gonna do now. Uh, the skirt is currently mounted on a bodice lining piece that was made using the same pattern as I used for this. So hopefully I can just kind of line up the edges and then get it whip stitched together. But sometimes things don't go as well as you plan, so we'll just have to wait and see how that goes and I'll keep you updated. Hello everyone! So it is currently Friday and it's Friday morning. I think it's about 9.30 or maybe almost 10 o'clock had breakfast and I'm ready to start my work day, but I'm still feeling a bit mellow. So I think I'm actually gonna start it off with some easy stuff. I'm gonna list some patterns on Etsy. I'm working on these little artificial bat wings for a hat to go with the project that's been featured in this video. And this is gonna have its own Patreon exclusive video. So I wanna get some work done on this since it involves glue, which will have to dry. So hopefully I can get that done. And then I also want to do some pattern drafting or rather transferring a mock-up to paper. Last night I was just feeling really inspired about this new idea. It's gonna involves some fabrics I picked up at Joann's recently. Uh, this is the first time and the only time I've been to Joann's since quarantine started, so it has been over six months until this trip. I kind of had a time limit, so I was remarkably restrained, but I ended up picking up this fabric from the clearance section. It's like an Elan Con lace. It's a very thin one, so it isn't as stiff as they traditionally are. And then the highest portion of the lace is actually made out of black threads or black cording, uh, but the base of it is white. So it almost looks like spider webs. I thought this would be really cool and really matches my current, like, things that look like they belong in a graveyard aesthetic. I also have this fabric in my stash, which I'm thinking I could use as lining for part of it and maybe to make a skirt. And I say this in my stash, but I actually got this at Joann's at the same time. I just got it for a different project. And I got it for a different project because I ordered this material online and then it went into clearance, so it was available in store, but it wasn't available for pickup in store because it was part of clearance instead of available stock. And the fabric I originally ordered online, it didn't end up getting delivered and I thought the package was lost and then I got this in store and then I came home and the package had actually been delivered. So now I have more of this fabric I need so I could spare some of it for this project. And I think I'm going to do something kind of 1840s inspired with this, but I can't find any examples of blouses from 1840. I can only find examples of dresses. However, I do have some examples of blouses from the 1860s and from the 1830s. So I think it's likely that they did exist in the 1840s as well. They were just significantly more more rare. But from what I've seen from the fashion plates from the 30s and the pictures from the 60s, the blouses tend to have very similar silhouettes to the dresses that were worn during those periods. They're just even more detailed and even fussier and they tend to use more gathering and be a little bit less fitted and structured. So I'm going to keep all of that in mind with my design and I've actually already sketched this out and I've already draped it. So that's why I'd like to get transferred to paper this morning. And last night I did actually get the lining pinned in place for the uh, day dress or the wrapper that I've been working on throughout this video. So I could probably get that finished today, but I'm feeling really inspired about this and I find the beginning stages of projects are the hard to get, hardest to get motivated for. I definitely wouldn't have said that a year ago, I would have said doing the finishing details is the hardest part, but recently inspiration 
has been so lacking for me and that's something that you really need a lot of to have the motivation to get started on something and to drape it and to do the fittings for it and then once it's actually started I find it's easier to kind of push yourself along even if you aren't feeling particularly inspired. So I really want to embrace my current mood today and get some work done on this. I will just zoom out uh, and show you the sketch for it, the fabrics in a little bit more detail and, and show you what I've draped on my dress form and then I'll get to all of the various little tasks I've mentioned so far today. So this is my sketch and I was originally thinking of using a black silk taffeta for the skirt and then adding some lace to it but I've been looking online and I can't find any that I really like. Uh, I want something with a bit of texture to it and that doesn't seem to exist in my price range. I don't really want to use a polyester because it's going to be very heavily gathered and then I think there will be too much bulk at the waistline. So this fabric um, is a little bit shinier and kind of tackier than I wanted for this project. I originally bought it uh, for a 1860s gown where it will be covered in mesh so it'll be dulled a bit but I actually really like how the sheen of this looks with the uh, sequins in this lace so I think that could pair well together and it's my stash and I have enough of it so it's probably worth a try but anyway the skirt's gonna be very simple aside from some trim which may or may not end up being added and then this is the idea for the blouse and I was also playing around with hat ideas since I don't think this really suits up on it uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it gathered and draped over the shoulders and then have tiered roughly sleeves that uh, form into a more fitted sleeve that have contrasting cuffs and I think for contrast I'm gonna use white lining for the majority of this and then for the contrasting portions I'll line it with black so it will still overall have that lacy texture but there will be parts um, that are contrasted just because of the color of the lining and I want to do kind of a half blouse slash yoke underneath it that will have a false button closure actually I guess it'll be a real button closure because I need it to open at the neck uh, but it won't have side seams so it'll be relatively open at the waist and just secure with ties and I think that entire part of the garment is going to be made out of contrasting black and then I'm thinking about doing uh, lilac details because I have a brooch with some lilac details that could go with this and I have a really cool belt that is actually based on turn of the century designs and earlier Edwardian designs but I think it would go really well with this too. So that's my plan for the blouse and that's definitely the part of this project that will be most complicated and most difficult. The skirt's basically just a rectangle. So this is what I've drafted so far. This is the half blouse that's going to go underneath it and traditionally this would probably be shaped with gathers not darts but I like the darts better because then you have less bulk underneath the actual blouse. Uh, so it was very very simple to draft. It as you can see uh, is kind of open at the sides and I'll smooth this out a little bit more when I transfer it to paper. And then this back piece I haven't even trimmed uh, and then I also drafted the collar for it which is just a little uh, kind of Peter Pan style collar and I actually have the actual blouse draped underneath this I should have draped this first and then draped the blouse over top of it but I did things a bit backwards so once I peel this off the dress form and get it transferred to paper I'll show you what the draped blouse underneath looks like as well but it'll be a while before I get to that because first I want to list some patterns which are over there and then I want to work with my bat wings which are over here and all of this is done with the wonderful Gwen on my desk. She's definitely happiest on my desk than on the floor even though I made an adorable wonderful little bed for her uh, so I like doing some stuff in the morning while she can hang out with me which is what I'm doing today. Okay so I still haven't listed the patterns but I did the work that needed to be done on my bat wings so now those can dry for the rest of the day or if they dry in a couple hours that would be awesome but I'm not particularly hopeful because I used a lot of glue on them. Uh, uh, but anyway, this is what it looks like underneath the dicky slash half blast thing that I'm making. So this is the majority of what you'll actually see out of the blouse, and this is what will be lined with cotton, and then uh, have an overlay of that lace. So it's gathered, and the shoulder starts pretty far back, and the front section is gathered. It's going to have at least three rows of gathering at the front uh, to hold it all in place, and then it's got a pretty sloped side panel, Then that's what the back panel looks like. And I'm probably not going to bother making a mock-up for the half shirt, just because it is so simple that alterations to it would be pretty easy. Easy, but I definitely will for this uh, just because I want to make sure that the back fits properly and everything like that. And then I have to press these and trim them but that's what the half blouse looks like just thrown down on my table. So I ended up transferring all of the patterns to paper and then I started working on actually creating the garment. Uh, so this is the little half blouse that will go underneath the proper blouse and it's fully lined with brocade but the brocade is quite uh, prone to warping so I'm going to flatline it with a layer of super lightweight cotton which is also what the blouse will be lined with actually and then over top of that, um, over top of the black brocade, there will be this fabric, uh, which is the lace that I'll be using for the entirety of the thing. So I've cut out all three layers 
layers uh, for both pieces. This is the front, that is the back. And I also got the collar cut out and I actually pad stitched one side of it really sort of sloppily because this fabric isn't uh, high enough quality to really reap the benefits of pad stitching, but I want to do it anyway. Uh, so this just has to be pressed and then it can be turned right side out. And I did make a mock-up for the collar just to ensure that it would fit because I ended up making some pretty major changes to the shape of it uh, when transferring it to paper because it didn't really line up with the neckline I drafted. It looked like it did on the dress form, not so much when I was actually looking at it on paper. So the next step is just going to be basting all three layers for each piece together, uh, and I'm going to do that by hand because these fabrics are kind of shifty in that they're prone to shifting around. Uh, so I don't want them to warp or anything if I do this by machine and put too much tension on them. So I'll do it by hand and then I can get started on construction, which should be very, very easy. However, before doing that, I do have to figure out what sort of closure I'm going to do on this, uh, if it's going to have buttonholes or if it's going to be snaps or what the deal is. So the layers are all now basted together. These are the front panels and they don't line up perfectly, but I just laid the pattern over top of them and trimmed the edges so everything is as it should be. And this is what the interior looks like. So now I just have to mark the dart placement and then sew the darts and then I'm going to trim the seam allowance with picking shears and whip stitch the seam allowance down and I'm going to be repeating that process for the back panels which I also got basted and then sewn together and it just got caught on a pin which is why it's puckered but that's easy to smooth out as I basted the layers of fabric for these together and then I sewed them together with the one inch seam allowance at the back. I was originally planning on assembling this with French seams, but it's actually quite thick once you get all the layers of the fabric together. The lace itself is quite hefty too, so I didn't want the bulk that that would provide, so I just sewed it as a normal one inch seam and now I'm going to clip the edges with uh, pinking shears and whip stitch it down to prevent it from fraying, at least somewhat. So that's where I am right now and I think next time I see you I should have the dart sewn, the seams basted down, the potentially even the shoulder seam sewn and then I can put out my dress form and start to get an idea of what it's going to look like. So I just finished whip stitching it down the seam allowance. It doesn't look too pretty but it'll definitely do the job. And then I raided my button boxes and I came across some jet buttons that are probably from the early 1900s actually that I think suit this era and this design nicely. So now I just need to figure out how much to turn the front edge inward by, get that marked, get the shoulder seam sewn up, get that basted down, then get the collar turned right side out, then sew trimmed the collar, then sew the collar on, then I can turn the front edge inward and sew on all the buttons. Which sounds like a lot, but shouldn't take more than an hour. And I'll try and give you some more updates step by step. Okay, so I went downstairs and I got some hand sewing done. I managed to get the side edges of the shirt, partial shirt thing hemmed. So now it is actually over there on my dress form and I just took a photo of it for Instagram. So all that's really left is sorting out the closures, sewing on the collar, and then adding ties to the waist. But before I can sew on the collar, I have to finish the collar. Uh, I ended up pressing the edges and then turning it right side out. And then I decided it needed something to break it up um, and away from the rest of the shirt since it's made using the same fabrics. So I decided to trim it using this really cute little silver ruffle. And I liked that, but it still kind of blends into the rest of the fabric, uh, the rest of the shirt rather. I've also decided I'm going to use some jet black beads uh, on the sleeves of the blouse that goes over top of this. I wanted to incorporate those glassy black tones, which will also be uh, mirrored in the buttons that I use for the partial blouse. So I'm just adding uh, a little line of beading around the edge of the collar I'm using some beads I got from Michaels. I've got these little rectangular ones that I'm using and then I'm positioning these in the center of each scallop of the trim. The trim is actually serving as an excellent guide for the beading. Uh, so I've been starting kind of at the narrowest portions of the trim and then doing one rectangle bead, one circular bead, one rectangle bead, and then just tying off the thread at each of those points. And I just move my way along until the beading is all nice and pretty like it is here. And that keeps it nice and even as well. So I'm just going to carry on doing this all the way around the collar uh, and then I can get it basted onto the bodice and get this starting to come together. And I'm really happy with how the beading breaks up the materials and creates some contrast and also just adds a little element of detail to it as well. Also I ended up deciding on different buttons. They're still jet buttons. They're just a slightly shinier, nicer style, or at least nicer in my opinion. But they were a little dirty, so I'm currently soaking them in my bathroom. I'll show them to you later, but in the meantime, I'm going to finish this. So it is the next morning, and as per usual, I can't remember where I left off. Uh, last night, I packaged up some Etsy packages, and then I worked some more on the bat wings that will be featured in that Patreon video. I also finished beating the collar, and then I got it basted onto the 
partial blouse. Then I sewed binding onto the edge of it, which was pinned inward to neatly hide the raw edge. And I also folded the fronts inward and sewed them in place and bound them with bias binding. Or not really bound them. I sewed or top stitched binding over top of them uh, and once laid flat that covers the raw edge. So now I have to whip stitch that down by hand and there's actually going to be quite a bit of strain on these edges uh, because they will have snaps sewn into them. So I can't use as loose of stitches as I did for hands such as the ones on the side. So that's going to be the next step and it's been several months since I've had to do any sort of durable uh, hand sewing so we'll see how that goes. And once that's done I can figure out what sort of closure I'm using. I think I'm either going to use hooks or snaps. I'm leaning towards snaps. I don't like them as much because they're not as durable but uh, I feel like since this fabric has a relatively open weave, the hooks will be really likely to catch on it rather than the bars they're supposed to hook into. It will have a false button closure though, which means after the hooks or snaps or whatever sort of closure I'm actually using is sewn on, I'll be top stitching, or I don't know why I said top stitching, I'll be sewing buttons on top of the stitch points for those to hide the stitches and to also create what looks like a false button closure. The reason I'm not doing a real button closure for this is because the fabric is quite thick since it is so many layers thick. And and also sewing buttons into lace or buttonholes into lace rather is kind of a pain just because there aren't as many threads to stitch through so it can end up kind of unraveling at those points and just looking a bit sloppy. So I feel like avoiding them entirely is the best bet. And then over here I actually have my buttons uh, still sitting in a bath of soapy water. I forgot to take them out last night so I have to do that this morning and give them a good little rub down prior to sewing them on but that's still several steps away. I do have some more patterns here that I could list as well but I'm definitely feeling more in a sewing mood this morning. Also, Gwen is once again on the desk, uh, and my mom and I are actually going out to Joanne's later today, so I want to get some work done before that. They had some really gorgeous plaid fabrics last time I was in. I didn't have very much time to look around, and though I've been trying to stay in as much as possible just because of coronavirus, I'm trying to prevent the risk of getting it as much as possible or the risk of passing it on to someone. I've just been trying to stay home and not take extra risks that I don't need to take because I'm privileged enough to be able to do that. But my mom hurt her foot a few weeks ago and she's finally better that she can walk around. So it's sort of like a celebration for that. Uh, she wants to get out of the house and I'm also definitely interested in some of those plaid fabrics. So maybe I'll take you with me later today or do a little haul once I get home. But in the meantime, going to be doing some sewing. So I just finished all of my morning tasks. Uh, I got all of the closure sewn into the underblouse. So then I went ahead and created a mock-up for the overblouse or the actual blouse, I guess. So this is just made out of cotton. Uh, I saw some issues when I was putting it together that have to be changed, but I'm going to wait to make those changes until after I do a fitting with it and see if there's any more major things that have to be changed. Just at a glance, the garment looks pretty large, so I think I'm going to have to take it in pretty significantly, like probably by about two inches, but I don't know if I'm going to take that in at the center back or if I'm going to take that in by gathering the front down further. I don't actually have the course that I want to wear with this out, and it's kind of being blocked off by a lot of stuff in my closet. So I might try this on over top of my 1860s corset and then just leave a little bit of extra ease in it uh, to allow for the slightly larger waist that my 1840s corset has. So after I do a fitting with this, I will update you uh, and then I will make all of the changes to the pattern. All right, so this is the kind of disaster that is my mock-up. It actually went better than I thought it would, but it didn't go great. Uh, I have to take it in kind of horizontally uh, because it was a little bit too long. Uh, I also have to alter the gathers at the front a little bit. I'm going to add a seam to the side so I can let it out if need be. I'm also going to take it in a little bit at that point. And then I'm taking the back end. Uh, I pinned it to be like three quarters of an inch, but it's actually going to be more like half inch. Uh, and then I also have to shorten this back panel because it didn't line up perfectly. So I made all those alterations to my pattern and and now the next step is going to be cutting out the real thing, which is pretty exciting. Usually with a fitted bodice, I would make a second mock-up uh, just to ensure that everything's perfect. But there's actually quite a bit of wiggle room here because there are the gathers in the front. And there's also going to be a seam at the center back and the side. So I can let it out or take it in if need be relatively easily. So the next step is just going to be cutting this out of my real fabric and then getting to making it, which is super exciting. So I finished the changes to my pattern and then I got the whole thing cut out of a lightweight cotton, which is going to serve as lining. So next up is cutting out the lace layer and then getting the lace layer basted atop the cotton layer. That's what I'm going to spend my next half hour or so doing. 
So all of the layers have been basted together and here's what two freshly basted pieces look like. And then I went ahead and assembled the back pieces. So I sewed up the back uh, side seams and I also sewed up the center back seam. And I actually sewed some twill tape into the seam allowance before with stitching it down. So I can put some plastic boning in there just to give it more structure. After sewing the seams, I trimmed them with pinking shears and then I whip stitched or cross stitched them down just to help reduce fraying. I also went ahead and transferred all of the gathering points onto the bottom edge of the two bodice panels as well as the shoulder of the bodice panel. And I actually by hand uh, sewed two rows of running stitches and gathered between the two points down to four and a quarter inches. So that shoulder seam aligns with the shoulder seam of the back panel. And sewing up that seam and then whip stitching the allowance down is actually the next step. Now after that's done I'm going to install the facing. So I went ahead and I drafted a little facing pattern that's just going to neatly finish off the top edge, or not really the top edge, the neckline rather, and then I cut that out of cotton and I just turned the outer edge inward by half inch. So now I have to sew up the shoulder seam for this, sew in the facing, and then do some more hand sewing. So now the shoulder seam has been sewn up, it has been whip stitched down to prevent fraying, and I also sewed the facing in place, and then I understitched it and then I whip stitched the outer edge to the lining so it is nicely finished as well. And now I think I'm going to mimic the beading I did around the collar of the half blouse that goes underneath this uh, and I'm going to add some of this metallic silver and white trim around the neckline and then I'm actually going to bead the trim too uh, just as I did on the collar. So that is the detail work on the collar and that's what I want to do around the neckline as well. I'm going to be using some black beaded fringe on the sleeves or at least that's my plan. So I think it will look nice if I can incorporate beads of that tone into the body of the bodice as well. Beading is generally pretty time consuming though I do enjoy the process so this will probably take me a good hour or two but I'm looking forward to seeing the outcome. And then I can gather down the fronts, sew on the side front pieces, do a fitting, sew up the side seams, and then I will have the sleeves to tackle which is definitely not a part I'm looking forward to. I've already drafted one set of sleeves this week and I feel like that's kind of my limit but I do want to move forward with this as well. So we'll see what ends up happening. So last night I finished up the beading and I'm so happy with how it looks. I think it really kind of makes it look more cohesive with the other garment, but also creates some contrast between them. So they really look uh, like two separate pieces, which I think is cool. They're cohesive pieces, which I also think is cool. So I'm really, really happy with this. Uh, I also want to show you the things I picked up at Joann's, so I didn't buy a whole lot. I think that's actually going to be the end of this video. I have the wrapper that I started working on in this video, uh, and as you can see it is still pinned to the lining, and that's about it. I didn't end up making any more progress on this since I've just been working on the 1840s two-piece ensemble. I'd really hope to get this started and finished in this video, and I'm a little bit disappointed that that didn't happen, but I'm also really happy with how the lace blouse is coming along, and I'm glad that I switched focus to that. I'm going to insert a photo of what this looks like on my dress form here, uh, so you can get a better idea of what it would look like finished though it still needs to be hemmed, I have to make a belt, I have to figure out the closures, and I also have to sew the lining and the skirt in place. Even though I didn't finish that, I'm happy with what I accomplished this week. It's not as much as I probably could have accomplished, but it's definitely the most productive I've been in a long, long time. As you probably noticed, there's been a pretty big gap between my last video and this one. I've talked a little bit about this on Patreon and Instagram, but I just haven't been in the best place mentally. Putting out any video seems overwhelming, much less putting out one every week. And though I know that's something you to do in the past and something I'd love to be doing in the future and something I see other people doing. I can't even comprehend creating that quantity of content right now. The only way I can think to describe it is like watching American Ninja Warrior and seeing these incredibly athletic, brilliant people and thinking, I can't even comprehend how you get your body to do this. That's sort of how I feel about other people putting out one video every week. Even though I know it's something I used to do and it's something I'd like to do again in the future, I just have been so demotivated and so depressed. That just hasn't been a possibility at all. But I am feeling better and I do have some stuff pre-filmed, so hopefully now that I'm a bit more motivated, I'll get to editing that footage as well as creating more content. This was a really great way for me to ease back into sewing and to ease back into filming, so I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Before I go, I do just want to show you the couple of things I picked up at Joann's the other day. The first thing that caught my eye was this really cool like fringy fabric and I think I might actually use this to make the beret style hat to go with the wrapper that I've been talking about throughout this video. I was originally just going to use cotton sateen but I really like the texture this has and I think that would be fun so I might give that a try. As I got this snuggle flannel because 
I'm really into these greeny tones. I thought I could make a nice, very comfortable winter style dress out of this. And it was only $2.99 a yard. And then the last fabric I picked up was this from their Platitudes collection. Every year I buy some of their Platitudes fabrics. I love the feeling of them, the weight of them, the prints of them. And they have an excellent collection this year. They've introduced a lot of like mustardy tones and green tones and I love them all. And I probably would have bought them all if they were on sale, but they were not. So I resisted and I just bought three and a half yards of this one. Again, I thought this would go well with my hair, and shockingly, I don't have a lot of garments that really go with the green hair, so I'm hoping to make some more basic skirts uh, and blouses to add into my wardrobe. I thought this would be a good fabric for one of them. I also picked up some baskets because these were 60% off, and I've been really into plants recently, most specifically orchids, and some people grow their orchids in uh, baskets instead of pots, so I thought I might give that a try. And they were like $1.50 each. And then lastly, I picked up my newest McCall's patterns. Because of the virus, I haven't really been going to stores, so I hadn't gotten to see these in person yet. But I have four new patterns out, including M8078 and M8071. And these are 19s inspired blouses with raglan sleeves, as well as skirts that are lightly flared with pleated details and yoke style waistbands. There are three different skirt options and there are three different blouse options. I love these so much. These might actually be some of my favorite patterns I've done with McCall's, uh, just because they're so wearable. They're the type of garments you can put into your everyday wardrobe and have that bit of vintage historical flair to it without them looking outdated. So I love that so much and I think they're really flattering designs as well and I worked really hard drafting them. Then there's also M8123, M124 and this is a hat pattern and a coat pattern. This is a coat pattern that I made last year uh, and then I remade it at the beginning of this year as a sample and I love this coat so much. It has Watteau pleats at the back and it's just so dramatic and wonderful and it makes you feel dramatic and wonderful. I'm so happy that now you guys can make this too if you feel like it. This was paired with a pillbox style hat. Uh, so there's actually the pattern for the hat that I modeled that costume with. So it's just a very simple pillbox style hat with some decorative trimming on it. And then there's also a pattern in here for a very full Edwardian hat, which would actually look really quite lovely with these, even though it is slightly from an earlier period. So those are my new patterns. Now I finally have them in hand. And if you wanna get your hands on them too, you can buy them from the McCall's website or anywhere McCall's patterns are sold. So that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed my little haul. I hope you enjoyed all my rambles and my sewing adventures throughout this week. Uh, and I will talk to all of you very soon, probably with another blog. So if you're interested in seeing how these various projects turn out, then subscribe and stay tuned.